Welcome to the McCaslin household. I'm Bob McCaslin. My wife and I are having the privilege of having a Bible study with you today, and we're thankful for that. I would like to begin by telling you a story. It's a true story. I don't know the person's name, but I do know that it's a true story. There was a lady who had a very difficult time in her life. She was very ill, but she couldn't find a solution or any doctor or physician who would be able to help her or find the cure for her illness. She went uh, for a long period of time trying to find different people who could assist her or help her. It became so bad, as a matter of fact, that uh, even her family, they spent everything, and they said, we just can't spend any more. We can't do any more. And so they were separated from her, and she was all alone by herself. She had spent everything that she had, still no help. And there she was, all by herself. The society that she lived in just closed the doors to her in every way, everything. She wasn't allowed to touch anybody. She wasn't allowed to even communicate. But she talked to herself. Now, one day she heard about a physician who could do miracles. And she said to herself, if I can just get close enough, I believe that he might be able to heal my Ill illness. And so she did. She, she braved the crowds. She braved the situation. And finally, she got to the point where she was able to reach out to this physician as she thought of him and find a cure for her illness. Now that's the way I tell the story. If you want to see the story as Mark or Matthew tells it, you would want to go to the fifth chapter of Mark and he tells the story about the lady with the issue of blood. For 12 years, she had it and has spent everything. And then one day she heard about Jesus and as Jesus was passing by with the crowd all around, she mustered up enough courage that she made her way through the crowd until she was just able to touch the garment that Jesus was wearing. And Jesus felt the power that existed as it moved from him into her. And he knew that he had been touched and that something had occurred. And Jesus turned around and Jesus said, who touched me? And the lady said, it is I, and I've been healed. And Jesus, as he spoke, spoke to her, said, it's your faith that has healed you. Let's read that. It's in the fifth chapter of the Gospel of Mark. And let's look at it together. The fifth chapter and the 21st verse. And when Jesus had crossed over again, the boat, the other side, a great multitude gathered about him, and he stayed by the seashore. And one of the synagogue officials named Jairus came up and upon meeting him, 
fell at his feet and entreated him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Please come and lay your hands on her that she may get well and live. And he went off with him, and a great multitude was following him and pressing in on him. And a woman who had a hemorrhage for 12 years and had endured much at the hands of many physicians and had spent all she had and was not helped at all, but rather had grown weary. And hearing about Jesus came up in the crowd behind him and touched his cloak for she thought if I just touch his garment I'll get well. Matthew says she spoke to herself and immediately the flow of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. And immediately Jesus, perceiving in himself that the power proceeding from him had gone forth, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my garment? And his disciples said to him, you see the multitude pressing in on you, and you say, who touched me? He looked around to see the woman who had done this. But the woman, fearing and trembling, aware of what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and said to him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. We oftentimes find ourselves talking to ourselves. And sometimes that's good. It's good for us to talk about the past and about our presence. And it's good for us to talk. And if we're not careful, we will talk about our past in the negative sense. We will remember our sins and they'll drag us down. We will remember the mistakes that we've made, the errors that's been in our life. And we will remember sometimes the good things, the positive things. It's good for us to talk to ourselves at times. It's best to always talk positively about ourselves and to ourselves. But the most important thing for us to remember always is faith is the issue. Do we believe that Jesus meant what he said when he said that we're forgiven? When we confess our sins? Do we believe that Jesus is able and capable of doing in our lives the miraculous things that change life and make life better? In our own personal situations that we may find ourselves in, do we have faith to believe that it's possible to be delivered by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. I think these are issues that we must be confronted with today in our social situation. We must ask ourselves, are we doomed? Or is there an answer? Can Jesus lead us to a positive life even in negative situations can Jesus lift our spirits when about us there is that negative situation 
that presses on us. What about your faith? Jesus said to her, your faith has made you well. And I think that's true today in our lives. Our faith that Jesus is exactly who he said he was and we believe him and we trust him and we give ourselves wholeheartedly to his leadership and direction in our life. In the book of Philippians, the 11th chapter I, excuse me, yes, the, in Philippians 4, <laughs> in Philippians, the fourth chapter, and the uh, eighth verse. Finally, brethren, whatever is of truth, whatever is honest, honorable, Whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good report, if there is any <clears throat> excellence, and if anything worthy of praise, let your mind dwell on these things. We need to guard what we think about and guard the direction and point our faith in the direction of Jesus. Don't let the negative situation that you may find yourself in, don't let the difficulties that you may be confronted by rob you of your faith. Jesus can do the impossible. Don't let your past sins keep you down. <clears throat> Don't let your past feelings beat you. Don't permit the devil to cheat you out of today's blessings. Jesus said to a lady, your faith has made you whole. Make certain that your faith is in the right direction, not in a government, not in a social setting or social situation. Your faith directed toward Jesus. You know, he sent the Holy Spirit to us. And the Holy Spirit is with us in every situation, all conditions, all times. The Holy Spirit dwells within us. Let that Holy One have charge of your mind, your heart, and your soul. Trust Him as He moves your life in an upward direction toward Jesus. Let's pray now. Heavenly Father, we live in difficult times. <clears throat> we live in challenging situations. But as your children, our faith is directed that in all situations, in all times, you deliver us to a wholesome, whole life. You forgive us. You encourage us. And Father, I pray that in all ages, in all times, in all situations, we may turn our lives toward you. And our faith be directed to you. We trust you, Father. Thank you for the Holy One that dwells in and about us. 
It's in Jesus' name we praise you. Amen.